Good morning, people. Happy Friday when you're seeing this. It's Wednesday right now. I just dropped Addie at school and now I'm just leaving my parents' house because I was I just realized I was recording like five minutes of videoing and my camera wasn't even on. Rookie mistake. After and my mom and dad are gonna pick Addie up from school today, just have like some one-on-one -on -one time. Then she has soccer practice, so I dropped all her stuff at my parents' house so that she didn't have to lug it to school. It's mostly Bentley and Addie. They like, all of my kids are obsessed with my parents, but they like fight over getting time and like they don't like sharing time with my parents. Um, my parents are extremely like hands-on with them. Like when my kids are over there, they're like on the floor with them, playing all the games, like my kids are completely fully entertained the whole time. So they get like super jealous when they hear like, oh, Nani picked Bentley up from school today. Why doesn't Nani pick me up from school or vice versa? So it's hard because of Addie's social calendar and all the activities she's in, like she barely gets like a night off where she could do something like this. And even tonight, like she has practice at 5.30, so really she's gonna get like a couple hours with my parents, but anyway, also wanted to give you a quick update about my mom. She's doing, she's just started radiation a few days ago and she goes for six weeks straight, Monday through Friday. Um, weekends are off and so far so good. This is day three, I just actually passed her. She's headed there right now. Um, she said so far so good. She was a little tired yesterday, but my mom tends to overdo it and push herself because she feels fine so she starts like cleaning this or doing that and then it like hits her so that's how she felt yesterday but so far so good she said the like the whole setup to actually do the radiation is longer than the actual radiation itself it goes for monday through friday for six weeks i think she's done first week of may second week of may and she's still getting antibodies infusions through the end of the year but she's officially cancer free her lumpectomy went well. She, they took like nine lymph nodes out. Chemo's all done, hair's coming back, and knock on wood, everything is looking up. So thank you for the continued prayers. We really appreciate them. I wanted to share some like, I guess you could call them mom life struggles <laughs> I've been having with the boys, mostly Leo. Bentley's just like by default because they share a room that he's involved, but I, Addie's gonna be nine next month and I never had this with her. I never had this with Bentley. It comes to like sleeping and the bed situation. So the minute Addie was able to get out of her crib, she no longer wanted to be in her crib. So we had to transition her at like, I don't even think she was two yet, into a big girl bed. And since then, like it's been a breeze. Like she, we would put her to bed from the minute she was like two, I'll say, until nine. Like we put her to bed, she stays in bed. She doesn't get out in the middle of the night. She doesn't, oops, school bus. She doesn't play games. Like she's, it's always just been, she goes to bed, stays in bed. Bentley, we only just put him into a bed last year. And he's four. He would never even stand up in his crib. I don't know if it was because he was afraid or whatever. He loved his crib. It was like his safe haven, his comfort. I actually felt a little guilty putting him into the bed because I'm like, I don't know, he just loves his crib so much. It's, it's for me, peace of mind knowing he's safe. He had never attempted climbing out. The only time, I mean, the only reason we transitioned him was because I just felt like he was getting too big and uncomfortable in his crib. But even when he was a baby and would like cry or wake up in the middle of the night, never even stood up, would just like sit up and that was that. So, and then when we transitioned Bentley into the bed, again, like we put him to bed, he would stay in bed, never wander in the middle of the night, never get out of bed. Even now, like we'll, well, not now, recently, but even before this whole shenanigans, he would wait for me to come get him in the morning. Leo is like a whole different beast. So he started being able to climb out of his crib when he was like about three weeks ago. He's all, he'll be three in August. So typical age, we need to start transitioning him, totally get it. But the added layer is that him and Bentley share a room and they are obsessed with one another and wanna just play all the time. So when I mentioned this to my pediatrician, he's like, you need to put him into, it's time to get him out of the crib and into the bed. And I was like, right got it noted but 
that's not like keeping him he we can't keep him in the crib we're not gonna be able to keep him in the bed because he can get out so easily so we turned his crib into the toddler bed but like full-on expecting and sure enough this has been going on for about three weeks now every every night we put them to bed usually around the same time 8 30 and uh, we're lucky if they're actually asleep by 11 30 or 12 because from 8 30 to 11 30 or 12 rather than being able to just like relax after a day of momming and dadding we are up and back and forth because the minute we put them to bed it's mostly leo but we go downstairs their light goes on they're up playing the other day leo was playing with the water in his bathroom i had to lock their bathroom door it's this big game they like bring toys into their bed they're playing like it's the middle of the day I we have tried doing like the sleep gummies with the melatonin which I kind of even felt guilty about that until I started you know talking to my pediatrician other people and they were all telling me like how very typical that is for a lot of kids and parents but I like again like I've never had to deal with that never gave my kids sleep aids but even those like are not making them more tired or making them less apt to getting up so it's not really Bentley but but obviously like in the brain of a four-year-old he is not gonna be like come on Leo and we have to go to bed because he just wants to play too so if you guys have suggestions on how to manage this Leo's not afraid of anything there's not really like at this age there's not I feel like consequences are like we're not gonna go like I could tell Bentley like you're not gonna go to school tomorrow if you don't get a good night's rest or like we're not gonna go to Louis's game like there's not really they're not on iPads I feel like that's like a good takeaway but they're not they don't do screens there's nothing that like I could really take away and Leo has no fear even when we try to like scare him with the boogeyman boogeyman's gonna come in here like no fear whatsoever so it's just a struggle I'm hoping this is just I keep telling Dan like this too shall pass this is just a season we have to get through it we're just not used to it we've been very lucky but how do you force a kid to like stay in his bed without literally restraining him to stay in his bed like we've tried sitting in the room but then I feel like then you're creating like you know I don't want them to feel to think that I'm gonna sit in their room and watch them until they fall asleep every night I've tried sitting outside their room I've put the baby monitor back in there talk to them every time they would get out I sit outside their door we skip naps because even now like naps are hit or miss put them to bed earlier for naps woken them up to like all the th typical things that I should know would know would try even talking to my pediatrician he's like this is the age this is the age it's totally normal get yourself some good wine and settle in for a couple sleepless nights but truthfully I have never not slept this well in all three kids nine years of little kids like I'm getting less sleep now than I ever did as they when they were like babies and having like to sleep train I didn't even have to really sleep I had to sleep train Addie a little but even that was easier than what we're dealing with right now oh, I need to go into Walmart and return this I'm hoping I can get in a quick workout before Dan goes to work so I'm doing like this I'm loosely doing Luisa's six week program because I do her live classes and the six week program is really meant for like new clients to just get a taste of what her workouts are like. But her 30 minute versus her live classes, most of her live classes are the ones I do are an hour. I do like a mixture of both because I prefer her sh like strength conditioning, upper body, lower body bar less intense high impact cardio um, my back has is just so vulnerable I have like chronic back pain and I feel like the littlest wrong was out so that's why that's why I've been doing the lower impact workouts um, so I'm hoping I can get one in because I I typically like getting up around 6 and getting a workout in the shower before the kids wake up but I did not feel good last night my stomach I think it was something I ate I don't know I took Pepsid and like I just was tossing and turning and just so uncomfortable I didn't get to bed at a decent time last night and I didn't want to have to wake up in like three hours 
because I felt like I just, ugh. So, um, I'm hoping I can do one real quick. So these six week program is all 30 minute classes, which I prefer, um, cause I feel like I just push myself harder knowing it's only 30 minutes rather than like start out strong and then tire out in the hour. So that's that. And then I also have a company coming today for a patio like estimate slash quote. I have the couple weeks that we were sick, I did like massive spring cleaning. I just went from like closet to closet to drawer to drawer and I want to take you into my closet. My closet is probably like the best situation it's been since we moved into this house as far as just like how organized it is, the system, knowing everything in my closet I'm actually wearing. I know where everything is and it's actually bringing me joy um, versus just having like so much stuff. And I also want to take you into my bathroom because I purged so much makeup and I did film some of that process. So I want to take you through that and just show you like what I still have. And um, yeah, so this, and then, oh, and then I also have a bunch of stuff from Good American they sent me. So I want to do, I did the try on already. I'm going to insert the footage. So this is going to be all over the place. I just really wanted to catch you up, say hi. I love this whole like chatty, chattiness with you and then I'll show you some of like closet organization later maybe film some a little bit more of our day we have Louie's volleyball game tonight I don't have to get Addie from school because my parents are getting her and Bentley doesn't go to school on Wednesdays so Wednesdays are like chill days I don't do a lot of work and I can just be home with them and get stuff done like around the house um so yeah but I hope you guys are enjoying this so far here is my little setup we're gonna work out upper body and I actually am able to go on live. You guys will get to hear oh, oh. a bit of why I love it. Not like this by accident. It's fine. No, we're good. Oh, it's painful. <laughs> All right, let's do it. I'm going to record. You, you, you. We're crazy. Right. We've been called worse. Well, not you, just me. <laughs> Actually, you probably haven't. All right, let's hit record. Where's my music? Was the volume good? Okay. Oh, that was one song. Oh, Michelle, okay, we're gonna change music. I was gonna play your cheesy music, not cheesy. Hey, hey I like easy cheesy. now. Hi. Okay. Hi. We're gonna go to Michelle's mix. I swear on my dad, I had it. I was like, can okay, we just change it? If she ever shows up to the conditioning live, I actually I was just about to do the recording, and then I was like, "Oh my god, I think I can catch the same recording live because I was going to do the upper body." We got it. All right, now I'm going to mute you guys for real. How's the music volume? Good. Can I change the playlist? Good. You know I can make you all your own playlists. You just have to send me all the songs you want. This meeting can be recorded. Yeah. All right. We have thirty minutes of our upper body to work it out. In three, two, give me a big shoulder roll up, back, and down. Break that core. One more, one more, one more. All right. I want you to give you that IT band stretch. Bring that right fist up. Bring it over.
down for a good comfy set. I love the color of this one. It's almost like a, like a taupey brown. The sweatshirt is cropped, but if you're wearing high-waisted like matching bottoms or high-waisted jeans, no, no skin is showing. There's pockets, and I love that the bottoms are not quite a jogger, but also not a flare, so you can still wear some sneakers or even just some like Burks or sandals, super cozy, and I'm wearing a size one in both. I'll make sure to put all the sizes in the description box in case I miss any. <laughs> I'm obsessed with these jeans. I obviously need to wear like a higher heel, so you really get the full effect of them, but they are a flare, and then I don't know if you can see, but they have like a little slit in the front. So comfortable. These are a size four. I could go down a size just to have them fit a little bit more snug through here because I like especially a flare to like go more slim and then flare out. This bodysuit is also good Americans. Little snaps here that you can unsnap if you wanted to. This is a size one. This bodysuit comes in um, other colors as well besides black. Love good American bodysuits though. They fit and they have the most they fit so well and they have such a good amount of stretch and there's also no pulling or tugging. <laughs> you know, down there. Sticking with the little slit obsession that I have. These are a perfect length for Birkenstocks, sandals, sneakers, booties, or heels. They're not quite as long as the other ones, and I love that they are like a washed black gray because it just makes them really versatile to wear with really anything. But I do love a good black on black, and they fit perfectly. So good. Okay, favorite thing I have put on in a very long time. Not only do I think this is incredibly classic slash trendy, like it can be both um, because it's denim, but the fit of it and how it makes me feel wearing it is next level. I can't even describe. So easy to get on. This entire thing zips. There's a little snap here, but it literally snips, um, zips down to all, like down to there. And I'm wearing a size one. I feel, I just feel super confident and Love the large pockets. I think it makes the booty look really good as all good American jeans and why I love them. There's a little collar here that you could pop if you wanted to. You could dress this up, you could dress it down with tennis shoes, dress it up with heels, maybe tie something around your waist, throw on a blazer, a cardigan, I a flannel. There, I just and the stretch, you guys. There's so much good stretch in this. This is a classic. This will live in my closet for years to come and will be so much fun to just style all different ways based on the current trends. If you get one thing <laughs> with my code, let it be this one. Hey guys, welcome to my bathroom. I have been down for the count all week with the kids. I just was sick all week taking care of them, being sick, not fun. And I was just in here and I just, like anything else, I start one little task like I was going through my top drawer cleaning and organizing it and then I was like it just turns into this whole thing so I thought I would just film it and share with you my process of like purging and cleaning and organizing a lot of you have been here from the start so you are familiar with like a massive makeup collection and it has since condensed and I want to condense it even more because as I get older and more comfortable in my skin and knowing like what works what doesn't what looks good what doesn't um, I find myself reaching for the same products all the time. So I just wanted to do like another overhaul. I do this a lot with my closet too. And just purge makeup, skincare, colors that don't work, that I don't reach for, things that don't bring me joy, colors, um, like products that I don't really like anymore or don't really need anymore based on my skin and the current situation. And I just thought it'd be fun. Hopefully this will inspire you to get into your collections and bathroom organization and purge and do a little good so i'm going to take you through the process stay tuned i'm going to speed through some of this i'll add some um music some of it i'll talk through but it's a process when i do these things because i just like go drawer by drawer and like space by space until i get it all nice where i want it so here we go
I should say, up to um, the top of my clear cube, which it's dark in my cabinet, you'll be able to see. So I just pulled them all out. The other, the last drawer in my clear cube is all my little travel size, like skincare and makeup that I, I've gone through and I keep it like updated. So we are on to palettes and I just wanted to go through them all. This was the Coffee Cat palette. I love this one. I wish they would bring it back. This was a wet and wild like um, thing that they did limited edition. This is the Tarina Tarantino palette. I still use this one too. Okay, that was a long process. I'm on to brushes. I have a whole bag of brushes, but I also keep out way too many and I use the same ones all the time um, I eat like the ones that I have in my makeup bag right now these are the only ones that I ever actually use so I'm going to take the ones that I don't reach for right now like this one I'll use a lot in the summer because I put the radiance drops in there <laughs> um, and I'm gonna just put these away and just keep out the ones that I reach for Like my I, I didn't put this stuff away this is like my everyday makeup I just grab and go because a lot of times I'm getting ready like in my at my desk in the office in the office in the closet um, here's the big bag of trash and stuff that I'm purging expired makeup makeup I don't really reach for like empties here's my top um, these are like my most used skincare brushes and I'll take you through each drawer this is like Eyeshadows, liners, mascara, lips, um, blushes, and then bronzers is right underneath there. These are all like liquid blushes and liquid bronzers, and then primers, and then foundations and concealers. And then this is, I kind of share this with Dan. All right, so top drawer. Um, this is like dental stuff, tools and acne stuff, scrunchies, hair things. These are just some more overflow of skincare, moisturizers, cleanse off balm. The middle one, I made so much good progress here. All my lip scents, the lipsticks, my oils that I use. And these are just like a scrunchie and a thing I pull, use to pull my hair back when I'm washing my face. And then these are all lashes, lash stuff. You're sick. Yeah. And then these are all my kids' toys. So we are done. Took me in total about two and a half hours, maybe three, because I had to stop a lot, kids. Um, but mission complete, mission accomplished. The process of doing this is always dreaded, but then afterwards you just feel this like peace. <laughs> and... It makes me excited again to like go into these drawers instead of feeling like overwhelmed when I open them, you know? So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it inspires you to do the same. Hi, it's the next day. I did not get to pick up my camera again yesterday. I have, we had a little bit of drama. If you follow me on Instagram, you saw it. I kind of went off about a situation that's been occurring at Louis' school. I just couldn't pick up my camera again. But before I go right now, and put together, I told a few people on, a um, few people on Instagram had DM'd me asking for my recommendations on like the Stony Clover Target collab because it launches this Saturday. Um, so I want to go put together like a collage. I want to scour the whole collection and put together like my picks and recommendations. Some of the things I'm going to be grabbing, I'm going to be getting Addie a bunch of stuff for her birthday in May. She loves Stony Clover. I just got her one of those little keychain wallets and she's obsessed. So that's what I'm going to go do. So look for that. It should be up by the time you're seeing this. I'll post it to my stories and it'll be saved in my LTK so you can bookmark and be ready to shop. I'm kind of excited. I'm going to go Saturday. I'm kind of excited for like those old old school throwback like Target collabs with Missoni and remember those like designers and we, I would wait in line and like it was just a frenzy. So I, I'm pretty confident that's how it's going to be for the Stony Clover launch, but I'm excited. But before I let you guys go, I wanted to show you some of the new Stella jewels. It's been a hot minute that I've gotten to share Stella on here. We recently did a new updated collaboration with Maya Brenner, who was one of the first, I think if not the first, 
designers that we ever did a collab with and she did the famous on the mark necklace, the little sideways arrow. So she just did a kind of updated collection of this arrow necklace. It's curved, it's a little bit bigger, it's pave on both ends and then you obviously could flip it and wear it the other way. So if you just wanted some solid, but that comes in silver and it actually comes in a set with these little huggies. Okay, I adjusted the um, light so you can see these a little bit better. So you can see there's a little pave here and it's a little huggy. So those come with this necklace and you also have the option of getting the set in silver. So that's a great little giftable too. And the other day, I mean, you can stack them if you get the other earrings, um, either the hoop or the stud and then have this in the second hole. I did that the other day. There is this statement necklace that is kind of a bunch of arrows, but I love this. It's a really beautiful gold. It lays so nice. And then the back of the chain is like a thicker snake chain. It, it does not pinch my skin. My hair hasn't gotten cut, but I just love this chain. It has a nice adjuster on it, extender. And then I'm gonna flip you around. This is really hard to do. There, it's a pulley, so you can extend it or you can um, like open it, tighten it while it's on and it does stay, but it matches the necklace. I love it with my everyday arm stack and it's just so comfortable because it's that flat arrow. Okay, I had to bring you into the light because it got dark. So then there's this piece, which is gold, silver, and rose gold. It has the little pave stones. The other side is solid. Um, kind of like a chevron layer is really great with the curved arrow. These are a little stud pack. So you get the hoop with the little pave dangle. And then what you can do here is, and this is a little stud, you can actually take the dangle off and just wear these as um, a gold huggy hoop. And then you can clip that little charm on the bottom of here and you get like a dangly arrow stud. I shared all this on Instagram and you can see better pictures. They're saved in my s and spring highlight, but I love these. They're classic, everyday, great pieces to layer. And then this was not part of the Maya collab, but I also shared this on Instagram. This is called the Shimmer Necklace. And what's really cool, we've never done this before, this is actually a magnet closure. So you have three layers, and the chain is so beautiful and so shimmery. Three layers, and you can mix and match. But what the coolest thing about this is it's a magnet closure and you literally just snap it back. It doesn't get tangled. You can keep all your layers separate, but look at the glimmer of the chain. It's so pretty. So I've actually been wearing it with just the shortest one and this one, I took this one off and it's like a little lariat. It's so, so pretty. I love it. So I will leave links to the new pieces in the description box below if you wanna check them. How cute are these slippers from Loft? They're like a perfect little summer slipper where you don't want your toes completely covered. They're so fluffy. I think they come in pink and gray too. Okay, so I'm gonna give you guys a little update on my closet I told you. <laughs> Just noticed Leo's basketball's up there. Um, I've showed you, I've shown you like a closet tour before, but it was a lot more messy and full. I did recently a big, huge closet clean out and have like 11 bags literally going to the local women's shelter have more hangers <laughs> not that i'm trying to fill them so fast but it's just nice to see because before i had not one hanger so on this side when you walk in i still have all of my boots um i usually keep my little lv like ugg style boots there my braided sandals and then we're moving down to flats and dressier shoes and then more like snow boots my jeans are still here, kind of color coordinated. These are like bodysuits, basics, layering tanks. This is all stuff for giveaways. I rolled my shorts. I have my hats here on this shelf. These are all still sweatshirts, color coordinated, and then sweaters. Um, I moved a lot of like the boxes and I just stacked them there. And then I kind of rehauled, reorganized this closet. I re made sure to like stuff all my bags, made sure they were properly stuffed, made sure I had like dust bags for each. So I'll give you just like a quick rundown. I am gonna do an updated handbag collection. Um, I am currently in the process of acquiring one more. So I wanna wait until that one comes in and I'll do a handbag collection. This I've shared before is 
just like my little accessories boutique. <laughs> I change out the displays just based on like season, collections, colors I'm into, perfumes. And then these drawers I've shared. These are all my other jewels overflow of things. Um, this is pretty much more jewelry, like all my Stella pieces that I'm holding on to forever. My delicates, these I put anything that's like retired or I'm just not really wearing as much anymore. And I donate this little pouch and all of the accessories to um, Glam for Good. And then in here, wallets, small leather goods, some jewelry pouches, sungla sunglass cases. And then I reorganize this drawer. So I have all my baseball caps headbands, my travel sunglass cases, a couple belts, my little hat hanger, and then these are hats that I was able to like fold up. My desk mirror, and this is all Dan's side with the exception of right here. I have more hats. These are like my wintry um, newsboy lieutenant caps. Space. These are all of my kids' things that have made me and things that are special that I kept. I have rolled and I cleaned this. This used to be like jam packed. These are all of my sweats and joggers, comfy clothes, sneakers, and then booties and over the knee boots. I'm missing a couple pairs or in my garage that I wore to Addie's riding lesson. My red Christmassy stuff and then my outerwear. So it just feels like so much lighter in here when I come in here now. Um, and I'm gonna keep it this way. And just be really mindful about, like if I go to get dressed in the morning and I you know, wanna just like look through and I'm seeing something that I just like don't reach for, haven't wanted to wear, don't find joy, I pull it right then and there. Um, or I'll like pull it out to wear it the next day and if I'm still not really wanting to wear it the next day, that's usually a sign. And I try to keep the rule when one goes in, one comes out. If I buy a new flannel, try to get rid of one. Same thing with sweaters. And the other thing that I've done is really as I've gotten older and just like more into fashion. And also I think seeing yourself <laughs> on camera so much, it really has like helped me to see the colors that I think look best on me and look worst on me. Or not look worst, but like don't bring out the best in me. Like if you've noticed, I have completely overhauled gray in my closet. Like I do not own any gray. There was a point in time where I remember just like watching back a story and being like, I look washed out and ill. And then I just was like trying different gray things on. I'm like, these are not doing anything for me compared to like some colors. And I know there's all these like color analysis things you can do and people online, but um, I feel like I feel like I have a good handle on like the colors that look best on me. And so I'm really mindful now of just like the things that I'm buying and bringing into my closet and making sure that they bring out my best features. So I think I'm going to wrap it here. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing this like random mishmashy vlog and it was jam packed with lots of stuff. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in my next video next week.